We all know what James Bond's favourite drink is, but do you know what his favourite food is? Welcome to Comic Book Cooks, the show where we make a fictional character's favourite food. Today, James Bond. Now before you say it, James Bond actually is a comic book character. I know he was in the books, and the movies, and then comic books, but they are his comic books, and they're pretty good actually. So one thing I've always loved about James Bond is that he's a foodie. The fried mushroom looks terribly interesting. Yes, I noticed that. I'll get around to it later. He loves food. Ian Fleming always describes a lot of food in his books. And even though Bond is trying all different types of food from all over the world, his favorite meal? Scrambled eggs. You're joking. That's right, James Bond's favorite meal of the day is breakfast. There's even a recipe that Ian Fleming has in his book that James Bond loves for his scrambled eggs. Now we're gonna adapt that recipe today because it's a little dated. We're gonna refine it because James Bond loves refined food. He's a modern man. I think you're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur. We're gonna take that recipe and we're gonna turn it into something special. These scrambled eggs are gonna be so good that James Bond is probably gonna try and sleep with them and then take a little nap in them after he's done. I must be dreaming. All right, let's make this thing. Okay, to start with, we're gonna make what fancy bakers call an artisan loaf, which is gonna be the perfect vessel for our fluffed up little eggies to sail on. And if you don't want to make bread, that's fine. But please go out and get yourself some decent bread from a bakery. Don't just use some sliced bread you have at home. I'm watching you and I'll know if you do. What sharp little eyes you've got. Wait till you get to my teeth. First, take one and a quarter cups of warm water set around 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius. Then add two and a quarter teaspoons of dry active yeast, half a teaspoon of diastatic malt powder, optional, one teaspoon of sugar, whisk to combine, and let sit for 10 minutes. Next, add three cups of all-purpose flour to a large bowl. Add your bubbly, yeasty mixture to the flour and mix on low speed for five minutes. You'll need to scrape the bowl occasionally to incorporate all the flour. Make sure you turn off the machine before you do this, otherwise you might lose a hand. Once a shaggy dough forms, add one and a half teaspoons of salt and mix on low speed for 10 minutes. A smooth, supple, slightly sticky ball of dough should emerge. Once kneaded, place in a large bowl, cover with plastic wrap, and let rise for one hour or until doubled in size. Once risen, remove the plastic wrap, and then punch it down because- Stop! Stop! Okay, always do what Q says. Gently remove your dough from the bowl onto a floured work surface, making sure to keep all the gases intact. Now take the edges of the dough in segments and fold them into itself, creating a seam in the middle. Then place the dough into a bowl, seam side down, cover again with plastic wrap, and let rise for one hour or until doubled in size. Now, take a piece of parchment paper and lay it flat on the table. L lay it flat on the table. Lay it flat on the table. And lay it flat on the table. Then gently remove your dough from the bowl, seam side facing up. Cover with a damp tea towel and let rise for one hour or until doubled in size. Whilst it's rising, take a Dutch oven and place in an oven set at 240 degrees Celsius or 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Once risen, take a second to admire your smooth round ball of dough. Would you like to check my figures? Oh, I'm sure they're perfectly round enough. Now with oven mitts on, Take your preheated Dutch oven out of the oven, remove the lid, and carefully place your dough with the parchment paper into the pot, put the lid back on, and place it into the oven to bake for 30 minutes. After half an hour, remove the lid and bake for an additional 15 minutes. Then remove it from the pot and place on a wire rack to cool. And that's your bread done. You did it. You just made bread. Next, place a tablespoon of butter into a pan set on medium heat. Cut yourself a hearty slice of your fresh bread. Good God, look at that steam. I love bread. And place your slice of bread into the pan and let that melted butter soak into it. We want that toast to be golden brown, not burnt. Now, let's scramble these eggs. In a cold pot, crack one, two, three, 
four eggs into it, then turn the pan onto medium heat and immediately start whisking the eggs. Once whisked, add 10 grams of unsalted butter, then take a rubber spatula and continuously push your buttery egg mixture around until it starts to coagulate. Now there's a word you don't get to use every day. Coagulate. 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 I love saying it. I don't look like I give it down. Once your eggs are scrambling but still viscous, remove from the heat and whisk for an additional 30 seconds. Then quickly hit them with salt and pepper to taste, and then immediately place them onto your toasted bread to stop them from cooking and served at the perfect consistency. Next, add a generous dollop of creme fraiche, which will add an extra creamy texture to your dish. Then place two of your most perfect chives on top, and then a generous portion of salmon caviar, which will add a rich and salty depth to your eggs, and it's nowhere near as expensive as black caviar. Once your fish eggs are added, it's time to eat breakfast, or in my case, dinner, as it was 6 p.m. at night when I recorded this. This is the part I really like. All right, here it is. Scrambled eggs, a la James Bond. I'm sitting down today because I realized, why am I standing up when everyone sits down to eat? Standing up and eating is is foreign to me. I know it's a little bit of presentation, but James Bond is a refined gentleman. Bond, what do you think you're doing? Keeping the British hand up, sir. All right, I'm gonna go in for my first bite. Did you hear that crisp? I'm gonna try and get some creme fraiche, some salmon roe there, a little bit of chive, assembling the perfect bite. Mm. Mm. What was it? Those are the fluffiest scrambled eggs I've ever had. There's enough salt in there, there's enough pepper, the creme fraiche just adds an extra thick creaminess to their light and airiness. The salmon roe is another texture, they're like, Little flavor crystals that pop in your mouth. Mm. If I was James Bond and I was served this in a restaurant, and then out of the corner of my eye, I saw a woman in a little red dress trying to woo me on some adventure where we were gonna have some passionate romance as we traveled around the world chasing after a bad guy. But then I took one bite of this. I don't need to go with her. I'm gonna stay here and eat this. Honestly, this is five star quality. He always did have an inflated opinion of himself. Something's missing. Oh. Perfect. So this has been Comic Book Cooks. If you have a favorite fictional character and you want me to make their favorite food, shout out in the comments below. And please remember to like and subscribe. It means so much to me. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna go get outrageously drunk right now and eat these delicious eggs. Yeah.